Hi everyone, welcome to the session today. It's uh, really amazing to see everyone on call. And uh, today we'll be having an awesome speaker who will be speaking on uh, fetching data from APIs using JavaScript. And it's really awesome, it's amazing to see how JavaScript can do uh, really amazing work on the web. And uh, I'll introduce uh, the speaker. So the speaker is uh, Olushola. Olushola is uh, going to speak in a few moments and uh, he's going to introduce himself. And he will also introduce you on the topic and uh, what you people would like today. Olushola. All right, thank you. All right, thank you, people. Can you hear us, Olushola? Can you hear me too? Yes, I can. Awesome. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. All awesome. right. So, okay, fine. So, so my name is uh, Olushola Abiodun. So, I'm a web developer and also an educator. So, I'm uh, working with uh, a low CV and uh, an educator with. Uh, with YEP, that is Younger Power, Younger Power Programmers. So we'll be, let me share my screen. All right. So we have, uh, it's loading. Okay, fine. So fetching data from API with JavaScript. So that will be discussing today. And, uh, one thing I want to I want to quickly rush to to the fetch method. We won't have time. We won't have more time. We have to cover so many things today. So I will just go back to the introduction of the fetch method. So why do we need to fetch data from from JavaScript with a API with from API of JavaScript? You know, uh, as a as a web developer, all the data you need may not be on uh, on your local server like. The data you need to, to show your visitors or your web app might not be the one you have in your hand, maybe from external data. For like example, now we have a, a COVID-19, how people how they are creating a web app on COVID-19. You know, the data is, is, is it can be fetched from external API server. So that is why you're going to be making, it's going to be very easy for you to show live information to your visitors. For example, now we have a, my definition of fetch method is, a, is, a, is more than a um, prototype and is very well supported among the modern browser. So we are using Firefox, we are using Chrome, we are using uh, Edge, Microsoft Edge, so it can be very supported by them. So the, the it's basic what is this, it can send network requests to the server and load new information whenever it is needed in the browser. So say we make a network request, make a request to the server. Okay, server is all we need to input to show the to, to show the to show in my browser. They will send the request. After we send the request, then we load that information. The request that sent the information the return go to see in the browser whenever you need it, wherever you need it, and whenever it is needed, see it in the browser. Then so when you're using the fetch method, the fetch method has one mandatory argument. Okay, so it only has one mandatory argument. When you use the fetch method, the argument is going to be the URL or URL address of the API. Okay, either the API is locally host or is uh, it is an address. So you enter the URL, you enter it uh, inside the fetch method as an argument. Okay, so. 
Uh, this is an example of how we're going to show let response equals to the pet the URL address. All right, so we'll be, we'll be fetching our APIs from two from two different addresses, from the two, two different URLs. So the first one is uh, fixsum.portals. We'll be getting a portal, random portal from, uh, from the website. Then the second is to get a blog post from JSON place holder also. So we are going to walk through how we do that. So the next is uh, the, 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 the promise. So when you make a fetch request, so it, it works with the promise. All right. So now this is the promise. When we send the request with the fetch, then the response that is where we are looking from from the from the server. So we set a server here, how we want the request to be handled, we set it here. Then the request that was that, that I received, we have it inside our data, then we show it from the output, show it from the output. That's where we have the, then the output and the, the following. All right, so that is uh, that is that. So let's move on to the second, the third one. So we are not using this uh this promise, which is at the end. So we can use a uh, await sync, sync await. So uh, it's sync await. So we can use this also. So these are the two methods we'll be using. So the sync await method and the function name, the response that uh, get the request, then show the data. So we work. I'll be walking you through the whole process, how we can get those data uh, and show them in our browser. So these are the these are the websites we are fetching the data from. So you can, can go around it, you can go through the website and check and have an idea of what we are what we'll doing. Okay, I may not have time to go through this website. I'll just be telling us how we, we use them and uh, from the from the developer notes, uh, how to use them is already there. All right, so I will start by my, I will start with my uh, note editor, my text editor. So let me just share my text editor now that we can uh, move on fast with this. Okay, so let me try and share my screen. Okay, so Okay, fine. So this is uh, okay. All right. So this is my EJLs where we where we make the request. Then I have my EJLs of EJLs. So I'm using Express as my local server. So I'm using Express. So let's let's move on with the with the method I shared with us earlier. So the first the first the first place we are getting our data from is the uh, is the fixed sum. So we want to show random data here. We want to show random feature here using the fetch method. So we want to show random data whenever we load the browser. We want to show random feature from there. Okay. So now, as like I said earlier, our first method is uh we have a fetch. Okay, which is uh, going to follow by the URL address. Like I said, uh, the, the I showed you, showed you earlier, the URL address we are using. So which is, uh, let me just type it. Okay, so we have fix some, fix some dot photos. Auto slash. This is the resolution of the picture. I want to, I want to copy from the, the, the side of the picture. 
I'm, I'm, I'm getting from, I'm fetching from the website. So if you go to their, to their website, so what basically this URL does is that whenever we make a call to this URL, we get an random, a, a random image from the, from the, from the API. Don't give us a random image. That's the way we have it. We do give us random image, okay? So, so now this followed by a promise. Like I said earlier, that after the, uh, the fetch method, followed by a promise. So we have then, then uh, the response. The response, so let's use the arrow function for this, arrow function for this, the response, response of, uh, but, uh, love. Okay, so 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 basically, you might be very familiar with uh, with JSON or text, but this, because this is a, this is an image that we are requesting on the web server, so that should be dot blob. Okay, so after blob, we are not using blob, so you can use a uh, JSON, which is going to use later on. You use JSON, then we can use text from the, the source of the data we are looking for. So let's guess, uh, so after we have the, the data, then also again, the blob, that is the image got from the browser, the blob, then let's set an arrow function, arrow function again. So how, what do we need to do, what do we need to do with, the, uh, with this image got from the server, okay? So you know, uh, in, in my in the slide, I showed us that, that we have, the data, which is the, uh, the, the request that we make is there, okay? And so this is the, this is the return on the, from the Pixon portal. So how do we, how, do, how, how, how are we going to handle this return? Let's, let's get this, let's get this. I want to be, we want to be in this browser, we want to be in the body of the browser. That's how we want to, that's how we want to handle the return. Then we have a blog, Let's set a function so that is an image to let the image be equals to document document dot create create element create element img okay so we are creating elements with this. Then next is to get an image RSC now with the element just created on the on our document. So we have a image source. We are setting the source of the image now. RSC dot URL rates. Create object URL. So the block, which is a image you are getting from the server. So the next thing to get a, to append it the image inside the body of our browser. So this is what I mean now here, so the body. So we want to use this body to output the data now. We want to use the body, body of this, uh, our index file to output the data. So we have a query selector. So which is the body, like I said, there's a body. So you have the body, then you have a paint, paint type, which is the image that we have. The image that got you, that we have from there, the image getting from the, the elements. Then let's see. So I want to check, uh, we check the URL of each element. So let me save this. And uh, let me reload this.
Okay, awesome. So now you can see where we have a random image here from the fixed song. Okay, so let me reload again. So, like I said, whenever we whenever we send a request, so whenever we send a request, whenever we send a request, it's going to return us with a new image. So you can see now, you can see another image here. So which is a where we have it. Whenever we send this request, whenever we fetch data from Pixel or Proto, then what we do, we have our image where we have it, then the image document that we set and the URL. So in the body of our of, of, of the browser of the index, right? So we have different image. So then I want to show you the the URL. Let's let's I want to show you something on a, on a, on, a, on a console. I want to console log this image URL so that you know that whenever we have a, I want to log this. So whenever we have new image, check the URL also. Check the URL also. Whenever we have the image, check the URL. So let me open the developer tools. Okay, so let's load this again. All right, fine. So you can see that we have a the URL of the image is there, which is uh starting from the 40. This is the this is the URL of the image. And the image size is what we follow the, the height is 600 and the width is 400. This is there. So if you reduce the size, so you going to change the size to for us. Let's say you want to reduce the size to height should be, let's say you want to change the height to be to be 300 and the width to be 200. So that is uh we are trying to resize the height of the image. <clears throat> So we should have a smaller image here. Okay, fine. So you can see we have a smaller image here. So that is from the API call. All right, so well, we can use this. You can use this as, an, uh, as a gallery on your web app. You can use this as a, as, a, as a dynamic background on your web app. So what you just need to fetch the data from the Pixom, uh, the Pixom, just photos. Then you have your data outside immediately. Okay, so don't forget from the slide where we make the request. So we make the request. Let me comment this out. So where we make the request, and uh, this is where we make the request. Okay, from the fetch, make the request from this fetch here. Yeah? After we make the request, then we manipulate the result in uh, in the body of our website. That is that is all about that. So the second we'll be, we'll be working with is a uh, is a blog post. So I want us to create a blog post with uh with I want to get, create a blog post which I don't have access to. So I'm going to comment this out. I'm commenting this out now. So then we we'll put through how it's going to be. So let me comment this out now. So we don't have to use this again. Okay, perfect. So, all right. So we are creating a blog post. I want to fetch a blog post from the JSON placeholder. So JSON placeholder, I will open the browser, the typical.com. So I'm going to, I'm going to go to the, to the website and check what they have there. So then we, all right, so this is the type of code. All right, so so this is your API for testing and prototyping. Okay, so these are API once we get there from here now. So this is what we'll be using basically. So we'll be using the we'll be using post. Okay, we'll be getting this post. 
This is the method we'll be using. We want to get post. So inside the post, we have our body and the title to inside the post. So we are going to go through how to get the post from the from the API. So basically, if you make a request for, for a post, it's going to give us 100 posts as a start, as a go. All right. So that is the, uh, the we can read more on, uh, about them. That is a JSON placeholder. You can read more about them. So what you need to do is just to send a request to them and fetch a data from there. All right. So let's let me just save this and reload my my browser. So this is going to disappear in a moment. All right. So my blog post now. Okay. So this is my blog post. We are going to create now. So we have a section which is the ID of the post, and we have template. So each post, so we have section and it has ID post. So that is the list of posts we are we are fetching from from them. Then we have our templates. So this template is a uh, is HTML5 tag. Okay. So we have this template. We create this template. You have each post inside the template. Now see we have our post title and post body. This template we have post title and post body. So we'll be using them. So basically we'll be using uh, post templates and. Uh, we will also be using uh, this body and the title and the post also. So we're using all of them to have our results with the JSON place with that. All right, fine. So let's just move to, let's move to, let's move to the main JS. All right, so, so first thing we do is uh, to get our, uh, to set, our post section and post post template section of the post. Want to get this post section, okay? Want to get them, the post section and the, the templates so that we can be able to use them. So let me quickly do that. So when we start to see how we are going to make use of them, this section, documents, query selector, Query selector. So, which is the which for the post? That is for the post. Post. So, this for my post. Then uh, I have for my template also. For each template on the that the results you are going to get. Template our documents, document query selector. So don't forget we have uh, so we have post templates. Awesome. So fine. All right, fine. So the first thing is to do is now to set a uh, ASIC function. Okay, we want to use the ASIC function for this. So the first thing we use is uh, we use uh, the fetch method with the promise. So we want to use AC function to fetch the data from the from the browser. So we have a async function. And so let's name the function get data. So that's the name of the function. That is a get data. We can make name it anything we want, but let it get data. That is, we are, we are fetching data from the from the play JSON placeholder. All right, so uh, you know here yeah, we have hundred. When we make a call to this, when we make a call to this website, we have hundred posts. Okay, when we make a call to this website, we have hundred posts as a go. But we we find a way to stream it down. To the number of posts that we want that we need at the particular time. Okay, so let's get uh, let's create a post, a post that's going to come up. Let's name that post stream. Let's name our let's name our post stream equals to our wait, then fetch, fetch from where so we are fetching from. Uh, the website where is the JSON placeholder? 
then this is here. Okay, so just on the place of that, the typing code.com. So we have a slash post. Okay, so, uh, so this is where we are making the call to this is the post. So you want to make comments, you want to make a call to comment and do that, our brown portal, just to get the data. So we are making a call to post. All right, that's awesome. So let's let's move on. So we have our post. Okay. All right, so now let's get our... Okay. All right, fine. So let's get the post now. The post, that is the result that is sent to us from uh, from the play from the JSON place order. So we are with then we have our post stream, the post stream dot JSON JSON yeah. So remember, I told you that we have three types of data that we normally refer, which is the blob, blob, text, and JSON. So now we are we are we are requesting for JSON file now. Okay. So here now, you remember when we are program when we are checking for a picture, we use blob for that. So the post stream that is the result from here dot JSON. Okay. That is uh, for for our for our. For the for the post that we are going to get, like I said, now if you if you make a request, you make a request to the to the to this website, you are going to have hundred posts at the go. Okay, so let's let's try to let's try to get to stream it down with uh illustration. All right, so we have let's i equals to zero. Okay, so we have a high score to zero now. Then for each post now, we are going to use for each year. We are going to use for each year. Okay, for each post that is gotten from uh, from the JSON place order, we want to stream it down now to like ten or twenty. We want to stream it down for like ten like, to ten or twenty, twenty posts by request. We want to have twenty posts by request now. Okay, so let it be. So let's say we have our post dot for each, uh, for each, for each, for each is the function of for each. Are you now that for each post? So if you need to go go to this function and uh, I think I think uh, method uh, the class is on on the plural side, you can get them the sync function. So the class is done on there. So to read more on, on, do, on this. So it's very simple. So we have a, for each post now, for each post we are going to get on the on the server. So let's make sure we have a I plus plus that the first. Sorry for the first post. Okay, fine. So let's set a condition for you now. If I Less than 20. Okay. So we don't want to exist 20. We don't want to post to exist 20. Then we have to. Get them post. On that here now, on this post now, we have our title and the body. We have title and body here. So let's set the title that is going to give us the title and the body. On the title or to post dot title. Okay, that is the title. Then same thing for the body also. Same thing for the body. Post dot body. So we need the body and the title. We need the body and the title. So now this is where the thing is, is interesting now. Okay. Now let's let's see. So let's see the request before we move on. Let's see the request that we're going to get from here. Let me let's 
Okay, let's let's just move on with this. So we have uh, this this way is interesting now. This is the body, this is the post. We are facing the body now and the title. We are facing the body and the title now. That is fetched from the from this place on the JSON place order. So we are fetching the data now. We have the post and the title already. When we send the when we send the, the request, so we have the post and the title. For example, now let me show you something now. Let me show you something. When we send the request, what we, what we are going to have. To the log post. So let's consult log the post. So let me just reload this and open the developer tool. Let me save this. Okay, so this is come before the for your condition. This is come before the condition. Let's send this here. Come before the before we even set the condition at all. That means that the request is you now to check where the problem is. Okay, so let's just move on with this. Not giving us, not giving. I want to get the results of the post. It's very important. Perfect. Okay, let's 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 continue with the with this. Let me comment this out. Okay, fine. So let's manipulate each post that we have now that we are going to get from this place. Continue. We have new post equals to document dot import import to 
load is going to be post template your content content Okay, so, so the reason why we are doing this post contest true is to have the results of uh settings. Then we move on to the post title now. The post title from the from the JSON placeholder lose post title. <laughs> Post title, post the query selector. Which is a uh, which is what we have on the uh, this is what we have in uh, index file, which is uh, we get the the ID of the post title, the ID of the post title. Then we have the post body now. Post body. Post the new. New post dot query selector. Query selector, then we have a post, post body. Post body. All right, so now, so after we have our post body and post title created now, which is the, the new post from uh, query selector from the JSON placeholder, then the next thing to do is to get those post title inside the body inside the body now and inside the the body and the title now so we have a post title now so inner text inner text post to title okay then we have a post body also post body those inner text post body. All right. So don't forget that we have uh, the body that we set from the uh, on sets. This body and uh, the title and the body. So and uh, the post title and the post that we, we are trying to get the data passed into this post title and body. So this is the body, this is the title now. Okay, so we are going to get that data passed into this template. Then show in the, the, the browser. Then we have uh, the next thing to do is to get a post section now. The post section is from the beginning, then append the child into it, append the, the new post that we have. New post. New post. Okay. So we have a new post. From the, so we have a new post now. So let's save this. And uh, we have a new post here. A zero somewhere from here. So I need to check the where zero is coming from. Okay, we have a
Okay. Oh, sorry. I did not call the function. So sorry for that. Let's call the function. That is why <clears throat> we didn't get that. So let, let's call the function, get data. That is why we don't have our data shown. You can see it will not load the content. Do not load the content. Let's let's load the content. All right, fine, awesome. So we have a we have a title here. Then we have the uh, the body. The title here we have the body. If you count it from up till down, see it's going to be it's going to be less than twenty. So what I'm trying to console here is uh is the result of is the result of the of all the posts that we have all the posts that we have before we streamline it down to 19 posts, okay? Before we streamline it down to 19 posts. Okay, so you can see here now, we have an array of, of 100 posts. We have an array of 100 posts, okay? So the array of 100 posts shown here, then we have each post under the user ID, the title, so you can see the first post that we have here. So the first post that, that is shown here is this. S and T, all these things is there. Really, the title, the title of the post. Then we have uh, the body of the of the post. So that is uh, that's all about that. So you can see the body is there now on the post. But we don't we don't need all these things. See, it's hundred, it's one hundred is much. So we only need so we only need uh, the nineteen. That way we similar it down to nineteen posts uh that we use so you can see now i don't need to write all these blog posts i didn't need to write all these things what i going that if there's any changes in there from the json placeholder this 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 post will automatically change so that's why you can see some some covid 19 web app so whenever there is an update count whenever there is a new count for daily count you have a daily count monthly count uh, death count, all those stuff in your web app, they automatically change because it is controlled from the API. Okay, so that's why it's very, very important. Uh, it's going to make your, your website to be dynamic. So that is a uh, that about that. Let's let's run through this again. So the, the reason why we, <coughs> we didn't have the result earlier is that this aggregate data wasn't called, we didn't call this function. That's why I'm not showing. All right, so. Let me comment this out. So I have to go to long view to comment my to comments Sorry for that. All right, so <clears throat> this is where we set the option of the of our text. We streamline it down to, to 20. So you can want more or you want less. You can change the searching back to five. That is, we are going to have four posts here now. So we have four posts. Only for is going to show on here. So you can see one, two, three, four. Four is there than five. So that's where we have our, we create the, the new post that we got from here, the query selector, which is uh, the post title and the post body. This is where we create the post body and the post title from the, from the API. Then the body now is set down to the post title inner text. That will be the inner text function to get the post title and the post value. Then what again? We append the new post into our post section. So you can see here we have a post section here. We have a post section here. So we append the new post inside the post section. Then the post templates, the new post that we have, the new post that we have inside the, the post template of content. That we that we able to use this uh, new post dot post template dot content true. This is how I said it to true. Is to have this change. Is to have all these change. Okay, so have all this change. So you don't say it to you have a template shown. That is uh that's all about that on the on the fetch data. So we can advance this into dynamic website and get 
can go to advisor there's this one there's a yeah it's also a web uh api so i use that in one of my one of my api to so do the advisor documents so you have the api you can use the api to set to do the web web app and uh, you can also use the, the first one we use which is the uh, uh, pixom.photos you can use also that to get the dynamic photo with your eight api so thank you for this session cliff and bethany so are we are we hand over to cliff now because of our time so I hope you guys enjoyed the session and uh, look to see to have more sessions in the future. All right, thank you so much. Awesome, thanks uh, Olishola for the wonderful presentation. Uh, I, I think I've um, uh, learned uh, a really important topic on how to use a sync and also um, I can see on YouTube people are educating uh, on how to use the blob function. It's really interesting that all the small things that we we use on our daily basis are actually some of the best and uh, some of the things that are really helpful uh, in the in us for for our development. So um, I have a few questions uh, that are from YouTube. So Elvis Kipto asked, uh, instead of callbacks, can someone use a sync await with the fetch method? Uh, in this case, which is better and why? Yeah, I didn't get that very well. Please come again. Okay, so there's a question from Elvis Kipto, he says, instead of callbacks, uh, can someone use a sync await with the fetch? method in this yeah. case which is which is better and why yeah i think uh, i think which is, is better and uh, it's majorly used okay it's majorly used uh is is it's, we have a we have a sim simple simpler line of code you can see here using going to promises then all these things which i think i will just need only two lines of code to get your data to fetch your data so it's very, it's, it's, I, I would recommend you use a sync await. It's better and uh, it's, it's, it's okay. It's okay. I think await is uh, better. So you can go on with that. Awesome. So, and also the inside, I, I, I think this is more the same question that uh, Elvis Kipto asked, but I'll just ask it. He said, when do we need a sync in Fetch API? Is it mandatory for all cases? Yeah, it's not mandatory for all cases, except you are using the function, okay? So if you can find your way, uh, your way around with the promise, it's fine. But if you can't find your way around with the promise, I think I wish is, uh, is the best, you are, especially if you have uh, a, a larger stream of, stream of data. So I think I wish is, is better to use in this case. Okay. And then there is uh, another question from Jaco. So this has been a huge debate going on on YouTube. Someone asked, what does the word blob uh, do in relating to using the fetch function? Okay, oh, I said uh, the blob function is, uh, is, is, is basically used to fetch image from the okay. API. Like I said earlier, we have three type of data from the API, either you have your JSON, which is the second one we use here, or you use your text. If the, if, if the, if the data is coming from the text document and the blob is, uh, is majorly used for image, to fetch an image. That's why we use the, the blob to get the image from the Pixel photos. So we're only getting it for image. And we use this, this straightforward and uh, no problem with, with using blob, it's just for image. Okay. Uh, thank you. There's also this one question on YouTube. It says, what's the difference between fetch and get data? Fetch and get data. So this get data is, uh, it doesn't have any relationship with the fetch. So the only relationship between them is that this is the name of a function that I use. It's the name of a function. Okay, you can see a six point is the name of a function. I can change the name to other name, like get post, like uh, new post, my post. So there's no, the fetch is a, is, is a JavaScript function. Why this function is from my own uh, 
my own uh, initiate when I'm programming the get get data. You know when you are naming your uh, your function, you should use the name that you're familiar with. So later on, you will be able to go up very well with the with the name. So this get data is not JavaScript function. Why fetch is a JavaScript function. Okay. So I'm moving on to Slido for those who ask their question. This this really important question. It's simple but also important. So okay. it's, this person asks, what makes a person decide to use an API? Okay, what makes a person decide to use an API? I mm. I said earlier that I made an uh, an high web app. Would I use the API for which is advisor? If you check the website advisor.netlify.app. So I didn't have all the advice in the whole world. And I have a database that they have the advice there already, which people can search and look for the advice they need. So since uh, the API is just help you to, 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 to make your website robust, you have a robust data that people can fall back on. And for, I, I give an example of a daily data. Of, of COVID-19. You know, you know, you can't get data on your own. We'll you be going to the Ministry of X to get the data. They have the API sets that you guys can go there, you just use their data, use their API in your web app. So whenever they updated their own server, you have your data inside your your your, your web your web app. So I think uh using API is is is, is, is the practice that the developer has to to, to the practice very well. It does help your website not to be static. It's going to make it dynamic. So if you, if you don't use the API on your own website, you have a static web or you have your API data that can be changed time, time to time, time to time. That's why you have uh, the, 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 some of the websites showing the, the, uh, the latest. If you go to the, to the US COVID-19 the website, you can see they have the data showing Time to time, five minutes ago, ten minutes ago, ten years, five. You have time to be doing that all every five minutes. You're updating your database for five minutes. You don't have time to do that. But API is going to, when you said the API is going to help you to continuously do that for you. That API is very, very important in your web app. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, I think I can pick one question. Uh, I think two questions that I've seen on YouTube, and then we can wrap up uh, from there so that we give uh, leeway to the other guys who are joining as well. So there's one question uh, from Abdul ba Basri. Can you explain more about the difference between the post template in EJS document and the post template in JS? Okay, the post templates, yeah. Yes. And uh, and which one? And the one in inside the I think in the your JavaScript. Okay. Okay. So this is this is it inside the in the EJS here. The post templates. The hide it. Uh, the reason why I use these templates is to you know don't, I don't know the data I'm going to fetch by the end of the day. That is why I use the template. Wherever the data is coming on, you guys should, should handle it in your, by yourself. What I just did is just to get the template, the post template, which is here. Now I use the post template, the post title, and the post body. So this post, okay, let me go here. All right. So this post template, I still have the post template, the content, yeah, says to true. That is, uh, I'm activating this, this guy here. So if this is false, if this is false, you won't see any results inside your JavaScript. So different, uh, so the work is that uh, we get the post section, the post template, uh, the query selector. You know, when you are the DOM, on your DOM, you select the post template with this post. We just created a new, a new variable, a new name. Then we use a, then we use this as a, the query selector from a, from my EJS, which is the post template ID here. Then my fullest data that we have inside here, which is uh, the template, the new post, which is the new post you are getting. So you can see at the end of this day now, we are paying the new post. What we are paying the new post is that, okay, when we have, uh, when we select all the data needed, 
which is from the post mm. ID, the post body, where we have all the data. There's a need for us to input them, to insert them inside this title, title and body. Okay, there's a need to insert them inside this title and body. That's where we have the new post. New post, when we are appending the new post, where is it? The new post here, then the selector of our post body and post title, which is which are here. Then we move on to get the data. So they have different functions here. They have different function here. The new post, uh, the post templates, and uh, the post title. They have different functions. Which one? Which one? Which one? If one is lost, your web is not going to function. Awesome. Thank you, Thank you so much, Olushola. I believe we've uh, used the time really, really well. And also uh, people have learned uh, really an amazing topic from you. There's a guy who was saying he didn't know um, how to deal with APIs or how to interact with APIs, but right now they have grasped at least uh, a short glimpse of what an API is and what an API can do. So thank you so much, Olushola, for your time and also uh, uh, taking your time to do the session. For the other guys, uh, there's another session coming uh, right next. Uh, so uh, don't go. Uh, this session is the only that that is the only one that is ending. And also, feel free to to take a screenshot on YouTube uh, and then use the hashtag uh, guards2021 and uh, we'll be able to do it. We'll follow you and tell the world what you've been doing this weekend. Thank you everyone and I uh, hope you have a nice weekend.